What's up, guys? I am so excited to be bringing you the update of the year, for me at least, which is the REST API for software. This is a way for you to unlock your software app with ultimate flexibility, customization, allowing you to connect to any data source that has an API available. Yes, that's true. Any data source. Salesforce, Zillow, Intercom, whatever you can think of, you can now do it with software and use it as your data source. So in this video, I am going to show you how to use the new REST API in software step by step. So then that way you can get started with any data source you want, bring it into software and use it to power your software apps. Let's get started. So here we are in our data source section of software. And if I go into connect a data source, I will now see that I have the REST API as my data source. Can you ever believe it? Yes. And so I'm going to click that. And right away, you can see that we have templates available. We're going to try and make as many templates as possible to streamline this for you. So we have the most popular APIs just right there, kind of pre-configured. So that way you can just go in, add your API key and connect. But until then, you can also add any API that you want manually. So that's what we'll do. So I'm going to go add manual. And then here we're going to set up our standard call with our headers. Okay. And so for this, I'm going to connect to Zillow and I want to be able to connect to pull in properties and to see a specific property. Say I'm making a uh, real estate portal application for my clients. This could be a great feature for that portal. Okay. So I am naming my call here and then I need to enter my headers here. And then these are going to be shared headers for all of my endpoints. So if I have some kind of API key or a bearer token that I'm using to authenticate all these endpoints, put it here and that way you don't need to put it into all of your other endpoints. So I'm just going to quickly zoom forward as I enter these values. And we're going to continue. And now we have resources. Resources are essentially endpoints. Which endpoint do you want to set up next? And we are going to get started with the property listing endpoint. All right, so get listings, we're going to call it. So let's say get listings. And for this endpoint, we're going to use it as a get, and we're going to use this URL right here for it. All right. And now down here, you'll see that we have headers, parameters, placeholders, bodies, pagination, transformers. I'm going to go through all of those in a step by step fashion. But I want to first start with parameters. So on this URL call, I want to add additional parameters. So I search a specific region. All right. And working with the API and the documentation, they have outlined certain parameters that they will accept. One of the parameters is called location. Another parameter is called the status type. And another parameter is called the home type. All right. And so I'm going to search for a location in Los Angeles. I'm looking for properties that are for sale and I am looking for homes. All right. So that way, along with this URL, I have added these parameters down here to extend that. All right. Now, if I want to add any kind of placeholders or pagination, I could do that as well. And I can make sure that I get this JSON returned with a nice pagination to make this easier to handle. But the big thing that I really want to look for is my transformer right here. And so what a transformer does is when I hit execute here, I'm going to get a big response back, a lot of JSON. Okay. And so I go in here and I can see all of my raw JSON is coming back. And sometimes I don't need all of those fields back. Maybe I want to just organize, do a little bit of uh, housekeeping and just add a transformer in there. And the transformer will essentially say, hey, API only return the fields that I have listed in this transformer back to me. And furthermore, as you can see here, we have a Zestimate, right? That Zestimate is not formatted as a currency right now. It's just text. But in our transformer, we can say also return this estimate field and format it as a currency, right? Now, I don't know how to write JavaScript, but ChatGPT does. And ChatGPT helped me write this JavaScript that I'm going to copy and paste in here now. And then I'll go over it with you. And so if you don't have a transformer, you're going to want to keep that. Otherwise, we have the call set up with parameters, we're using a transformer to make it better, better for us to digest in software. So I'm going to add that. All right. Now there's another step to this. Whenever you show a listing, you also want to show the detail page, right? And that's what we now need to set up is the detail page for this. 
And so for the detail page, it's a different endpoint and we need to specify the ID record. Matter of fact, I didn't show you that well enough. So let me go back to that. Go back into here and go to edit this endpoint, back to my transformer. And I can see down here that that key ID is marked as ID field. And that is very important that you do identify an ID in this JSON. And whichever one it is, you mark it as ID and that you only have one ID field because that's what software is using to fetch this record. And then when you go to the ID page, the details page, you got to find that ID, the synced IDs, and then go there as well. All right. So that's added. Now let's go and add another resource. And we're going to call this property details. And for this, we're going to use this URL right here. And at the end of it, you can see that I added parameters here. It's called the ZP ID. Now that's the ID that we're using for the Zillow API. And we need to use record ID right there for software. This is how software is reading it. Okay. We don't need any headers here because we have shared headers. When we set up the calls, so we don't need to use them here. And if we wanted to do some transformers here, we could do that. And, but we don't need to as well. So I'm going to execute this. That didn't work return. So let's see what's happening here. Error and validation. And so why didn't this come back? Well, I entered a record ID here, but in my parameters, I never actually added or my placeholders that I have here. I never added a value for that record ID is right now. I'm going to try to re-execute this and that worked. And I can see that I have a lot of information coming back to me. All right. So now with this set up, we have these two calls. I'm going to add them. I'm going to save them. Now I can go into softer and I can start building stuff. And so I've already built a lot of this for you, but I want to walk through how I used it in softer terms. So here we have a listing page with our listing block, right? Over on our source, I have the API that I set up, the Zillow API. And as you can see in my resources, I have the two calls, the two endpoints that I set up the get listing and property detail. And in this case, I want to keep it as get listing. And then for my content, for my image over here, I'm using my image URL. For the header, I'm using my address. For bathrooms, I'm using bathrooms, bedrooms, and price. All right. And now for the action button over here, I say item on click. We're just going to go to the detail page like normal. And since we configured this API with that ID record, nothing else needs to happen here. Software is intelligently finding that ID and mapping it to the property IDs uh, page as well. So now if we go over to our get listing page, we have a simple listing block here. And over in this listing, I have image source for my image right here. I have the title, which I'm using for my street address. I have description, which is description. And then my section below, I have everything here. Bedrooms, bathrooms, it looks like date posted needs to be updated. And I'm going to update it there. Price, price. And that's looking pretty good. So if I go on over to my refresh page, let's check it out. I'm going to go back to my listing. Now I'm on my listing page here and I can see all these properties coming in. And man, that property looks pretty good. Let's click on that. And we see that we have this property at 10936 Charlon Road. I'm not quite sure. Nine bedrooms, 13 baths, $11.5 million. You see this one's actually not formatted as currency because we didn't use a transformer for this endpoint, but we can go back and do that. But otherwise, I mean, we're 10 minutes into this video. We set up a Zillow API with two different endpoints. We're using that Zillow for our listing page and for our detail page. And you can do this with any other API. So I hope you are as excited about this new feature as I am. It's something that I've been really pushed the team to do because I just know the opportunities that it opens up. And I'm so excited to bring it all to you today. If you have questions, drop them below. APIs are a new thing. It is more of a technical thing, but hopefully with the help of ChatGPT, the API documentation, and just an easy to use process of adding these API endpoints, it's easier for you to get started and also unlock so many doors for data that you're now able to use in software to bring your apps alive even more. So I hope you had a great time watching this video that you learned a ton and I'll see you in the next one.